Here is Francis Crick and Leslie Auger, uh, who are two scientists who hypothesize that life on the Earth may have been seeded deliberately by alien civilizations, uh, which is an idea known as directed panspermia. Now, these two scientists were considering whether aliens would try to seed uh, other planets with life. And they wrote back in 1973 in a, a directed panspermia in the article that the psychology of extraterrestrial societies is no better understood than terrestrial psychology. It is entirely possible that extraterrestrial societies may infect other planets for quite different reasons than those we suggested. So what these two scientists have correctly concluded here is that design could be detected in the absence of information about the designer's motives. Uh, we don't need to know the designer's motives to detect design. Science could operate with regards to detection of design without having any knowledge about the motives or the identity of the designer. Now, the proponents of argument from imperfection frequently use their psychological evaluations of the designer as a positive evidence for uh, undirected evolution. Now, their arguments are for imperfection almost always follow a syllogism. For example, uh, I have shown here three components of the syllogism. First part, a designer would have made vertebrae eye without a blind spot. The vertebrate eye has a blind spot. Therefore, Darwinian evolution produced the eye. This is the kind of syllogism argument from imperfection almost always follows. Uh, one can generalize this syllogism to any biological trait by saying that a designer would have made the biological trait without an apparent imperfection. The biological trait has an apparent imperfection. Therefore, Darwinian evolution produced the biological trait. That's the syllogism they follow. Now, this is a, a formal fallacy referred to as non sequitur, which is uh, Latin for it does not follow. Because the premises in this syllogism do not follow uh, to the conclusion that's being made, which is that Darwinian evolution produced the eye or the biological trait. So if we look at the scientific literature, uh, it contains no evidence that natural selection working on random variations can produce right from start an eye with a blind spot or an eye without blind spot or an eyelid or even lens or retina or any other uh, trait. Such a evidence is lacking. So this is what Behe says. The debater has reached his conclusion in favor of Darwinism based solely on an emotional feelings of the way things ought to be. So the argument from imperfection is actually an argument from ignorance. It's an argument which is psychological and it rests on an emotional claim rather than a rational claim, rather than a scientific claim. So a more objective observer may simply just argue and conclude that the vertebrae eye wasn't designed by somebody who is impressed with the argument from imperfection. So it's not a argument that's a scientific argument. It's argument based on ignorance with regards to uh, the detail. So let's look at what Miller's emotionally loaded argument has to offer. Uh, he writes that an intelligent designer working with the components of this wiring would choose. Now that's an emotional statement or psychological statement, would choose the orientation that produces the highest degree of visual complexity. So you'll find these type of psychological or emotional expressions such as would, should, ought to, should have, would have in the Darwinian literature uh, re related to arguments per, uh, from imperfection. So it's not a scientific argument. It's an argument uh, that's very emotional. It's argument that uh, rests on a, a psychological claim. So B, he, he writes that the fact that he offers these readers, as in he's referring to uh, technically sophisticated readership, who Miller uh, frequently writes for when he writes about arguments from imperfection. Uh, so he's saying that the fact that he offers these readers an 
argument based on psychology and emotion, such as expressions used, uh, you know, should have, must have, ought to have, instead of hard science, gives the opposite message than he intended about the relative strengths of intelligent design versus evolution. So if uh, evolution had a strong case, then it wouldn't be using these type of arguments. These are not arguments that are very scientifically grounded. So here is somebody who is highly impressed with emotional approach rather than an approach that's rooted in hard science. Uh, this is Paul Mears, who, uh, and his, uh, I've uh, condensed his version of uh, uh, his argument against intelligent design, which you can find on YouTube clip, which I've uh, referenced at the bottom of this uh, statement. Uh, if you look at nine, uh, from minute to nine and second 55, you'll find him uh, making a joke out of intelligent design. Uh, so I deleted the few extra emotional remarks he makes there, uh, which had no real substance, but the overall argument was uh, full of the expression complexity all the way through in a joking way. So he kept, uh, you know, emotionally regurgitating complexity to um, uh, have a psychological effect on some of his atheistic audiences. So he says and ridicules uh, intelligent design by saying complexity, 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 complexity. Oh, look, there's a pathway. It's very complicated. Complexity, 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 complexity. And you're going to be blown, blown away by the bacterial flagellum. It's like a little machine, and it's really, really complicated. Complexity, 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 therefore design. So he thinks it's funny and, and ridicules the intelligent design argument with this silly joke. But if we analyze Paul Mears' statement and put it into his correct perspective, uh, had he been honest about the flip side of his joke uh, and what it hints towards, uh, then he will realize that he's actually hitting an ax on his own foot because by just replacing uh, the expression complexity in his argument with uh, imperfection, you find that neo-Darwinists are doing exactly that. So imperfection, 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 imperfection. Oh yes, look, there's an apparent defect. It looks very poorly designed. Imperfection, 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 imperfection. And you're gonna be blown away by the vertebral eye. It's got a blind spot and it's really, really imperfect. Imperfection, 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 therefore Darwinian evolution. So this is what I came up with as a flip side of Mia's argument uh, or Mia's uh, joke. And you can see the clear contrast here between Darwinian evolution and intelligent design. So just as much as the argument against intelligent design, uh, you know, he uses to say that complexity, uh, it, 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 boils down to complexity, the argument uh, of neo-Darwinist boils down to imperfection. So to summarize the argument from imperfection, I will make three points. Firstly, intelligent design doesn't address theological questions about whether the design is perfect or imperfect. So apparent imperfections in design is still considered design. You can have an object uh, with imperfections, yet it is still designed. We've covered that designers do actually make imperfect designs. Uh, so we cannot know the motives. Secondly, argument from imperfection does not hold up under its own terms, as the imperfections often turn out to be well-designed when we inspect them more closely. So the argument from imperfection is like the argument from ignorance. Just because Darwinists do not know the details they think that they have the prerogative to claim imperfection. But when the detail is discovered, oftentimes what we find is that the design wasn't imperfect to start with. And thirdly, intelligent design concerns itself with the detection of design and not mental state of the designer. So often we do not know the motives of designers. So that question, should be best left to philosophy or psychology. 
That doesn't mean a product or biological trait in this case is undesigned just because we don't know the motives of the designer. It doesn't mean that. So intelligent design doesn't concern with such a question. It concerns